Welcome, everyone. My name is Nietzsche Janssen from KNCV Tuberculosis Foundation. I'm a nurse consultant. Everyone from you has mail from me. <laughs> and uh, uh, we are very proud to uh, invite you all to The Hague. And that so many nurses uh, came to uh, our symposium. We, uh, <laughs> we could not imagine that so many people uh, were participating in this symposium. We are very proud that we have the opportunity to organize this symposium with the help of our funders, uh, the Schravenhaagse Stichting, uh, the Dutch Nurse Association, the KNCV Tuberculosis Foundation, and the union, of course, the sub nursing and allied profession subsection from the union, also is from great help to organize this symposium. Um, we start with an, uh, some housekeeping. No. First of all, we are 126, so it's great. And I just uh, asked this morning at the registration desk, there were also 120 nurses registered for the conference in, in general. So it's, it's great, I think. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. And I know that in Mexico there were 63, so we are... We have the aim to improve the attendance of nurses. Now we succeed in that. So we hope we also have a good, af good afternoon and a good evening. And uh, that at the end we have a success overall. Uh, some housekeeping things then. Um, we have free Wi-Fi here uh, in the Marriott. And for the people who are not staying in the Marriott, we also have a special Wi-Fi for the uh, meeting rooms, and it's on the screen, the network, and the password. It's very easy. The union and the Hague. Uh, the program, uh, I sent it to you last week. Uh, we start with three presentations, and after the presentations, we have a break with Dutch cookies, and then we have four presentations. After the presentations, uh, we will... Uh, there will be a photographer from the union coming to us to make a group photo. I think it will be a challenge to have a group photo from us all, but I hope he is experienced in that. So we are, uh, I think it's a great idea to make a group photo of, of us all. And beside all the photos who were already made uh, and were showed on the booth from the, uh, from the NAPS in the conference uh, venue. Um, after the group photo, we will continue with the buffet and, uh, and the network event. And uh, Lynette will also uh, introduce this network event during her presentation. We are very proud that we uh, have, uh, could invite uh, two uh, chairs for this uh, symposium, because we cannot do this without chairs. And um, I'm glad to announce to you Alice de Witt, she is from the Dutch Nursing Association for TB Nurses, and Carrie Tudor from the International Council of Nurses. They will introduce yourself and show you through the program. Okay. Thank you, Nisha. I don't know if this, yeah, it's working. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, very honored uh, that I have been given the opportunity to lead this side event together with Carrie, of course. It's uh, lovely. And it's a great pleasure to see so many nurses from so many different countries. I'm not allowed to tell you uh, how many countries because, uh, well, you, you'll, uh, you'll see uh, why not. <laughs> but I believe it's the first time um, that we have been able to organize the, uh, a meeting like this for nurses at a world conference. And, um, uh, well, I think that is really, really great. Uh, when we were visiting the World Conference in Liverpool two years ago, I remember the difficulty of finding my fellow nurses, despite the green T-shirt, <laughs> which did make searching easier. I, I will show it for you, for the people who were not there. As evidenced by... <laughs> and the back, and the back. And the back. It's the way I found Carrie yesterday. <laughs> she was wearing it. <laughs> but it was uh, difficult in, uh, in Liverpool. Maybe not ev everybody was wearing uh, this T-shirt or uh, there were not so many nurses. I don't know. 
Uh, anyhow, you are now all here, and um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm conv convinced that this will be a very interesting afternoon and uh, evening. And uh, I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, pra Prakash Sonawain. I hope I uh, pronounce it right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Prakash Sanone. I came here to talk on 99 dots. 99 dots technology enable patient care in Mumbai, India. I have no conflict and I thankful to KNCV who arranged this program and gave me chance to stand here. Thanks for them. I work in this post, sorry, uh, I am a treatment organizer and I work in this post since 1995. Witness three different phases of the TB program in India. Passionate about the fight to end TB in the country. I work at a primary health institution at Parel, which is district in Mumbai. This chart shows India's population and uh, about uh, 2017 report as per uh, WHO report 2018, but uh, situation shows 2017. Uh, High burden with a large population, diverse treatment setting, challenge for TB management. Densely population with unique demographic dynamics. Mumbai has 1% of India's population, 2% of DSTB cases and 14% of DRTB cases. DRTB cases, drug resistance, tuberculosis. The image shows the stark difference of living conditions in Mumbai. Uh, population in, uh, in Mumbai, there is a more percentage of hutments and uh, chal system and high rise buildings are there. So there is different types of uh, living uh, things. TP program in India, 1962, National TP program that is NTCP. 1961 to 1986, era of conventional chemotherapy, uh, there was a daily medicine divided in three parts, morning, afternoon, and evening, and a long period too. 1986 to 1993, era of short course chemotherapy, that is small period, reduced the period of the treatment. In 1993, direct observed treatment short course, that is DOTS, using intermittent regimen tested. In 1997, revised national tuberculosis rollout, that is RNTCP. In 2017, roll out daily regimen with FDC and 99 dots. Working during NTCP. Patient name is Rahul. Rahul was given daily medicines monthly at a time, but there was no contact with us during the month till the time of refill. Rahul and I only met during refills 
and it was too late to take action if they were not regular. He defaulted after two months, but I could only identify this at the end of the month. There was no aggressive monitoring of patients' adherence at this stage. Work during dots. Patient's name, Suresh. Suresh had to come to the clinic every alternate day, and I administered his medicine at the clinic. We arranged treatment cards in stacks according to the days of the week and search by day. He was supposed to visit in the morning. One day, he couldn't show up. I kept his treatment card out and visited his house in the afternoon. He used to complain about loss of wages and additional travel cost to visit the health center because he has to come alternate day and uh, spend time every time. FDC and 99 dots. The latest change in the TB program is the daily regimen. In the daily regimen, fixed dose combination that is FDC with 99 dots. Simplicity of treatment. Increase patient acceptance. Fewer tablets to swallow. Before that was in quantity, that tablets in quantity. And now is fewer tablets. That is the main difference. Increase health worker compliance. Fewer tablets to handle. Hence quicker supervision of dots, easier drug management, easier to adjust doses by body weight, that is 25 to 39, 42, 54, 55 to 69, 70 and above. There is a different weight band. So it's a first band, a weight band, two pills, three pills, four pills, like it depend on the weight band. And actually, we save our energy with this 99 dots. <laughs> What is 99 dots? 99 dots is a low cost engagement tool which use basic mobile phones and customize packaging for patient talking, taking anti-TB medication. Everyday patient make a free call to a number that is revealed after dispensing their medications. This guarantee that the pills is in the patient's hand. When the call is made, we can track it on our app as the patient calendar changes to green for that day and we can track the medicines intake of a patient. Green color means he's consumed the medicine and gave missed call. If uh, there is a red, patient didn't took the medicine and if there is a light green, means patient took the medicine but didn't call to the uh, 99 dots. So after talking to the patient, we are uh, feeling the uh, adherence. So that is coming in light green. Uh, 99 dots in my district. This histogram of adherence. Over 230 patients currently on 99 dots in my district from three clinics. Average age 37 with 46% 40, of female means 54% uh, males are there. 99 dots adherence plus manual staff observation. Average 88%, 34% 30 of patients have perfect reported adherence. Patients counseling of 99 dots. Six months medications, but patients are given medicines for 28 days. Call is free even without balance. 
if they don't have balance in their mobile, that time also they can give that toll-free number call. This is good facility. Sometimes patients don't have the balance, don't have the money. So that time it's very good things in that 99 dots. Patient should follow path of pills. Patient should come back every 28 days when pills are finished. Means they save their time alternate day intermittent to come and collect the medicine and observe in front of me. So they can attend their job because earning is the most important. Job is the, also the most important. And the, with this facility, they are very much happy. Before, they are, before that, they are thinking this is the harassment one way. Actually, this was not a harassment. They are good for them. But how they will leave the job and come every, every alternate day. So they are happy with this treatment and this system. If patient has phone, administer first dose and make first call. When he first time is coming to us, we are giving them medicine in front of us and telling her to uh, call that means he had to have it that way. So behind that there is a one to toll free number so he's calling in front of us. So every time he habited to call the same. Same period, same time, we are giving them health education to swallow the medicine regularly. If you will take regularly medicine, you will be cured. You will be cured, you will not spread the TB to the people. This is also the help to the community. If you are properly cured, you will be happy. Now you are sad. You are in sorrow, your family is also in sorrow. So if you take medicine regularly, you will be the cure only, but you will not spread the TB in the community. Avoid bad habits. We are advising them. Avoid bad habits and take care of your health. Don't spit anywhere. Take a handkerchief or use your hand the while uh, coughing. Uh, always keep your house in good condition, clean and ventilated so air can pass throughout. And giving advice them, uh, till smear conversion, you take care of yourself and not to spread TB. If you will take this treatment properly, if you'll take this treatment <laughs> properly, you'll be all right, you'll cured. But if you'll not take treatment properly, so you'll go to MDR-TB. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Work after 99 dots. Patient's name is Sita. Sita makes a call regularly on a toll-free number. I can monitor this through the 99 dots of app and don't have aggressively monitor her utterance. One day she forgot to call. I receive an SMS at 3 p.m. with her name in the list. I immediately called her and inquired why she didn't call. She informed me that, uh, that she informed me that a family member needed the phone that day, but she took the medicine. I then updated her dose manually. Sometimes what happening now? A uh, patient consumes the medicine, but they don't have it to operate mobile, no? That time they are waiting for son, daughter, when she will come to the work, then she will dial. That time, sometimes they are forgetting. That time we have to address manually. Mm. Advantage of 99 dots. This system enables me to focus on some patients that are consistently non adherence There is a, also some accountability of our work previously, even if we did our job well, no one knew. Now they can see our utterance and know whether we are counseling and monitoring our patients. <coughs> uh, patients to, uh, sorry, advantage of 19.99 dot, there is a facility to enter the suspected presumptive TB patients Initial defaulters also we can, they are indicating means uh, who patient uh, 
tested her smear became uh, came to know that he is a positive sputum positive but not came into onto the treatment there is a criteria for seven days within seven days we have to take him on the treatment but that also sometimes is uh, getting lost that time they are uh, making up keep this patient is still not on the treatment mm -hmm. interrupted they are showing close contacts also they are showing and uh, came of prophylaxis below the six years 10 milligram per kg all best facilities are in there very useful one patient okay one patient sachin parab uh, after 6 month uh, regularly i checked with him now he become again he uh, relapsed case and because of this i took him again on the treatment patient stories patient also find the system of fdc plus 99 dots easier they have to come to the health center only once a time only once a month some patients are not very comfortable with house visit with uh, this system they can choose whether they want house visit phone follow up properly they are the lady uh, girls ladies they are avoiding this uh, home visit because they are unmarried and stigma is also there so they are very much happy with this 99 dots ending tb in the country actually we got secure job a government job now we are earning well now we are earning well while earning we got an opportunity opportunity to give best service to the people repay to the community and serve the nation actually this is teamwork actually this is teamwork somebody is doing their job properly but somebody is not doing well that time you won't get result if everybody will do their job honestly there will be no more tb so everybody should do their job honestly hard work is the second but honest is the first so everybody should do honestly their work i truly believe that if everyone is sincere and does their work with diligence we can achieve the goal of ending tb in india finally i want to say the health system the health system not the patient is responsible and accountable for patient care thank you don't go don't go anywhere yet so does anyone have thank you very much prakash for your um, nice presentation on 99 dots and it's getting i think 99 dots is getting a lot more um, attention does anyone have any questions for prakash before we move to the next speaker Yes, please, thank you. Uh, I just wondered, uh, if people do not have a mobile... Uh, okay. uh, hello, this is Hege from Norway. Yeah. I just wondered, if they don't have a mobile, uh, what then? If there is no mobile, then we are not keeping on the 99 dots. We are giving daily medicines, same medicine, but without this jacket. Because this jacket is having the uh, toll-free number behind that. Whenever you are pulling out the tablet, there is one uh, mobile um, phone number, that is toll-free number. So we have to dial that toll-free number. When they don't have, means roadside patient, homeless people, they don't have the mobile. That time we are not giving this jacket. Without jacket giving the medicine, but the same medicines are there. And we have to observe this regularly because uh, there is no at all uh, caller. That's why. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your interesting lecture. And, uh, uh, but is there a big problem uh, that people do not have mobile phone in India? Because... Uh, I ex my experience is that a lot of people have a mobile all over the world. But how is, is it in India? Is there...? Mostly roadside and homeless people, they are not using. No. Some uh, Hamal also, they are using mobile. Some Panwala also is using mobile. But some patients, we are most uh, thinking about the patient who don't have the mobile. Panwala having mobile, we are don't need for the patient who don't have mobile. That time you are not giving the jacket. Treatment is the same. 
no change. Even not a feeling change. <laughs> if he's even roadside, same treatment, same health behavior, same health education. Thank you. And we have time for one more question, if anyone has Carrie, another question. Carrie, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. yes sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you, Prakash, for the wonderful presentation. I'm very impressed with 99 dots. And uh, I want to ask, do you, uh, can you say something about the patient experience? What do patients uh, find from the 99 dots? Means what actually? Yeah, what, uh, do they like it? Do, do they find it a good way, the 99 dots? Do they... Uh, feel they comfortable with the patient's experience? Yeah, patients are uh, very much happy with this because they save the time to come to the dispensary alternate day and uh, no need to talk anybody. Just follow the medicine, give me, um, uh, just me, give me a call. Very beneficial. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is um, Maretta Helma from the Marshall Islands, um, and she's been working in primary health care as the TB program coordinator since 2009, and Maretta is going to um, talk to us today about an overview of active case finding screening program um, in the Marshall Islands, a nursing perspective. So Maretta, would you like to come? Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody, and Yangwe from the Marshall Islands. My name is Mareta, and I'm so happy to say that I'm the first nurse from the Pacific Island, and thank you so much for the nurses, and especially ARC nurses, but I will say that at the end of the, my presentation. Okay, and um, as you can see, the, my presentation is um, an overview of active case finding screening program in Ebay. It's, it's just like a story I'm going to tell you um, this afternoon. So bear with me. I, I will try this, um, you know, plenty of slides that I have to make, make them short since I'm going to present in 20 minutes. <laughs> right? Um, next slide, please. Oh, you have it right there. Just the green, hit the green arrow. I'm sorry. Which one? The green That arrow. green one. Yeah. Oops. There you go. All right, I have no conf um, conflicts, conflict of interest in this, uh, with this uh, presentation. And then now, this, um, this is Marshall Island. As you can see in the map, there's Marshall Island there. It's in the Pacific, and um, down, it's down below the map, it's um, Ibai, Ibai alone, and that's where I'm going to start the story about Ibai. So, as, it's, uh, as in the demographics, it's located in the um, Northern Pacific, Republic of the Marshall Island, and um, population of 53,177. But the um, case study, it's the island of Ibai, where I work, and this is second most densely populated city in the world. And um, Ibai is only two kilometers long, and 400 meters wide with plenty of people living on it. Wow. And two thirds of the population live in both Majuro and Ibai. So um, it's about 15,000 in that, um, um, 50,000 people living on Ibai with that um, um, two kilometers long and 400 wow. um, meters wide. Wow. Okay, next. Of all the U.S. Um, affiliated Pacific Islands, it first started off, as you can see, these are all the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands, and if you see in the chart, that's Majuro and Ibai are the leading islands um, of all those islands. And that's where, that's how we started off with this 
active case finding to really um, look for these um, cases, TB cases. Okay, next slide. This is the table that, um, as you can see, it's um, age group. Um, but to summarize this, as I said before, it's like um, 25 to 50 cases per year, equal number of males and females. These are the um, TB cases by jurisdiction inside of diseases. As you can see, PTB and EPTB, there's more cases on PTB compared to EPTB, and both is 15, total of 185. Okay, goals of active case finding for TB nearby to detect active TB um, early and to reduce poor treatment outcomes, long-term health problems and adverse social and economic consequences for individuals with TB. And to reduce TB transmission by shortening of the duration of infectiousness building capacity within, within the by TB program. And this, uh, this is the overview of the screening strategy, phase one, active case finding 2017. That was last year, we did our mass screening. And um, reducing infectiousness, TB cases among adults, looking for TB diseases in population with diabetes, screening for NCDs, that's um, Anson disease, diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol. Phase two, enhanced program activities, 2017 to 18. And in there, we prevent TB and expose children and expose adults with diabetes and medically at risk groups. Raised index of suspicion for TB, cough campaign, repeat annual x-rays for adults seeking care. Okay, and phase three, towards TB elimination 2018 and beyond. This is um, case finding and treatment of people with active TB continues. And treatment of all contact with TB infection extended from only treating contact to our children less than five years of age and immune suppressed vulnerable people screening for TB infection among remaining high risk groups and continuing to raise community awareness about TB. In, our, in this overview screening, the target group for screening were all EBI residents aged over 15 years. Estimated target group was 5,669 people. Screening was completed for 5,165 people. So they, um, we reached this target by 86% um, percent population. And screening for TB, diabetes, and since diseases, hypertension, and high cholesterol was performed too during this TB mass screening. Screening was conducted in 15 wattles or villages over nine weeks from 17 Feb to 20 April of last year. So screening overview, to assist NTB undertake the active case finding activity, four teams were formed. One team registered patients and coordinated a questionnaire. Second team did the testing for diabetes, Anson's hypertension, cholesterol, and provided counseling. The third was the AP team, and the fourth team were the case management team. These, team. these teams comprised of local and external staff working together throughout the screening activity to build the capacity of the eBuy TB program. External staff were volunteers who came to eBuy for a three-week placement. And then screening undertaken in eBuy, rapid mass screening for active TB in all adults, over age 15, combining four concepts. So with their symptom review, chest X-ray, gene expert, technical and diagnostic expertise. Screening was also undertaken for diabetes, Hansen disease, hypertension, and high cholesterol, as these are significant health issues in the Pacific. One-stop service for all screening. And then role of the NIST um, manager in active case finding. We rec I receive or we receive all new cases and take them to the doctors for complete workup prior to treatment. Coordination with the lab staff, TB physician about cases and based on the health notes from the AP team. One-to-one -one staff training and support for the new nurses and community health and outreach workers. It was a great benefit to have new TB staff work with TB experts from other countries coordination of the clinical teams and activities, assign staff to needed areas, and ensure that all areas were well stocked with staff and equipment. Yeah, 
this is um, still the continuation of the role of the case uh, nurse manager, and they take the case review with the TB physician weekly for those that need to start treatment for both LTBI and active. Ensure the cases are well taken care by, of by the three case managers. Collect all the updates on patients' treatment from the case managers. Weekly meeting with the case managers and monthly meeting with the child to discuss patient issues. Ensure that all TB and LTBI cases haven't missed their daily DOT by checking weekly with the case managers and assessing patients' mo monthly monitoring sheet. And we ensure that we have stock of drugs for the patient on treatment for active for both active and LTBI and reporting monthly to it by MOH and Maduro, and our NTB or national TB program in Maduro. <coughs> now the role of the nursing and DOT workers in this active case finding, the nurses mainly are the ones that help out in the registration and interview of the people that come for screening. DOT workers and childs help out in the sputum collection, navigate the people from different vitals to the clinic for screening. DOT workers and childs help with translations. They also bring in the follow-up cases that need to be treated for LTB or active TB. Patient education and counseling, testing of blood pressure and cholesterol, A1C, and the screening of leprosy was done by the doctors. The staff worked in a specially designed TB trailer. Approximately 30 people can be seen in the trailer at a time. So implementation and rollout of the screening activity through the regular meeting with the external team members and our SLT in the hospital, First of all, we met to risk and share of ideas of how to manage the screening activity. We engaged community leaders, NGOs, and the hospital staff in developing the screening plan. The plan was to have a flow that's shown to announce the screening activity to the community, as well as distributing pamphlets about the TB free by. And the staff involved in the screening were mainly by staff, not just nursing staff, but health promoters and NGOs like Youth to Youth, major TB staff and our external team members that came in three groups. Development of our health passport to record and manage patients' data and screening outcomes. The health passport is a unique digital record for each person. People were fingerprinted to create the record. All of the screening data, including medical records and treatment plans, sputum and other diagnostic tests are included in the passport. Passport also recorded when people needed to have further follow-up of the chest X-ray, sputum, or other tests. We started the screening on the last week of Feb till April 20th, 2017. Initially, we screened 200 people a day, but then the numbers gradually slowed, but we still reached our target of 5,165, which was 86% of the target population. The childs are the navigators, frontline workers, during the screening. If it wasn't for the child, we wouldn't achieve this target. They have their cell phones with them. And this is how we communicate with them when they are out in the community about the people for screening and for those that they need to complete workup tests for active TB. And these are our screening results. During the mass screening, this is what we have. Total screened, 5,165, 86% of target population. And we found 30 TB cases, we found 83 active cases. LTBI, three, um, 300, meaning 200 were cured, I mean completed, and 100 still on treatment. Diabetes, 1,153, and 410, 410 new di DM diagnosis. Hypertension, um, 1,313, 415 new diagnosis. Same with high cholesterol, 263, 132 new diagnosis. And for ensign or leprosy, 12 new cases. Issues and challenges increase in number and, um, of patients on DOT for both TB and LTBI. EBAS usually has to, um, 25 to 50 TB patients a year, but now during this mass screening um, in 2017, we had 80 within a nine weeks period. Um, new, TBI, new LTBI treatment, we even have um, two extra LTBI treatment like we had uh, before only one. That is um, INH 300 milligram for six months. But the additional, uh, during this mass screening, we had a um, combination of INH and rifampin for four months and rifampin alone. 
The new treatment used to treat TB infection were well tolerated by patients as commented by the child. The childs are the ones taking care of our TB cases as well as LTBI. So treat all LTBI cases and like in our protocol, we only treat high risk cases. Meaning before in the protocol, we only treat uh, five years and below and these are uh, uh, immunocompromised. But during the mass screening, it's really good. And this is the aim that we will um, prevent or decrease incidence rate of TB in the future. What worked well, the mass screening was beneficial to the community in terms of intensive and fast screening to identify people with TB. Everyone did a great job. Teams with local and external staff working together built capacity for the local EBITP program. Local staff received on the job training and skill development. Training of child and new nursing staff, we have two new, um, two new nurses and 14 child workers during this um, mass screening, which is really good. Support and commitment of the RMI Ministry of Health toward TB free by RMI MOH funding support for the screening activity, new staff, and funding for external team members, travel accommodation and program. Development of TB prevention register to facilitate LTBI treatment and follow up. What worked well? Engagement and support of community leaders to assist in awareness raising and support for the screening activity. Community leaders assisted with organizing hard to reach people. Engagement of local mayor's office and police to assist with transportation, setting up the EBI volunteer team, taking screening out to the community workers, going to door to door to locate people to be screened, extending cleaning hours and Extending clinic uh, hours and holding a weekend clinic to improve access to, to services. Okay, continuation, communi communicating the screening schedule with local TV media, media pastors and public safety to improve screening update. Um, active case findings, very good opportunity to really alert people that TB still exists within the Pacific. People within the community in the past have not come to be seen at the clinics, even though they're sick, but now they, after the mass screening, everybody show up because they know how important their TB is, the disease they have. Equipment that was used during the screening has been provided free of charge from WHO and CDC to the RMI MOH. Equipment can now be used in RMI for future screening. Areas for improvement, we learned a lot from partners that came to help out in this screening, but sharing what they do in their programs, and now we include these activities, like SOP in our everyday activity in the eBuy TV program. Case management is also improving. We have allocated case managers to take care of the patients. We found a lot of active cases of TB in the screening, and this is a good thing that we found people with TB. We can now treat them and make their families safe from becoming infected by TB. Stopping TB tra transmission is important and a name of the screening activity. Okay, this is the ongoing, what we do um, in our program from since the mass screening until now, we're still treating everybody and like before, we only treat um, um, high risk cases for LTBI, but now everybody, as I said before, um, all the, Whoever comes in with LTBI, we treat uh, on the spot. That's why we're expecting our LTBI cases to go up and we're expecting our active cases to go down. Summary, from my own perspective, on this active case finding through mass screening, it is very important that we have undertaken this in EBI when you see the disease burden out and outcomes. I want to highlight that over a five year period, we found fever cases during the active case activity, we found 83 cases over the nine week period. Before this mass screening, very few people were treated for TB infection. By continuing to identify and treat people with TB infection, we will prevent people developing active TB in the future. People of EBI staff of EBI TB program and RMI MOH really appreciate all the work from the partners and screening volunteers who came to EBI to work with us. And uh, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge the National TB Program, Marshall Islands, Ministry of Health Leadership in um, EBI, uh, EBI and Madro staff, and everybody who take part in our TB free EBI uh, mass screening. Support staff who assisted in the uh, active case finding activity, and then sponsorship from KNCV to present at a nurse's side meeting and attend the Union World Conference on Lung Health 2018. And then, of course, ARC nurses, Amanda and Carrie, um, WHO staff, 
and CDC, their names are there also. For more data, this is Marshallese word. Thank you very much. Please, 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 uh, please stay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marita. It sounds a, a very big operation you have uh, done at this uh, island. I never, ever heard of it before. Um, uh, it, and it, it learns us how, how you have to work together to, uh, to uh, um, get, get this done. Because uh, right. alone with the nurses, well, you cannot do it. And alone with uh, uh, one organization, I don't think you can do it. But uh, working no. together, uh, right. yes. it uh, makes it great. You, you have some TB left now in uh, <laughs> IB, or <laughs> no work for you anymore. Well, we still, um, in, uh, in our program, this is what I always tell my staff to, we need to be aggressive on this, to treat everybody, especially the LTBI, because these are our future cases. Yeah. And yeah. by doing, by treating everybody that with LTBI, we know for sure that we will decrease the incidence rate of TB in the future. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there anybody who has a question uh, for Marita? Nobody. I'm you had a very it. clear story. Several. Oh, several. <laughs> one. Sorry. I just wonder, with active case finding, you will find also other, with X-ray, other lung problems, like cancer. Are you able to handle other health problems or lung health problems outside, uh, besides the TB? TB, okay. As I said in the... Um, in my presentation. These are the doctor's job. They doing this and of course, yes, they found cases too like um, um, cancer, cancer of the lungs. So they said that even though they treat them with TB or like LTBI, but they then um, refer them to other places where they can scan, where they can confirm them whether it is really TB or not. And then from then, they can stop the treatment. Yes. Does that answer your question? Another question? Yeah. Yes, uh, I wonder, uh, did you not screen for HIV as well? Oh, no, we never um, screen for HIV. As, um, in our protocol, we have for all TB cases, we all um, give TB um, HIV tests regardless of the age, so we all test for them. Okay. Yes. Okay. Last question at the back. Hello, Marita. Hi. I have a question about the uh, Chow people. I think it's community health. Come what in. kind of people are they? Is this volunteer work? Well, for, as I mentioned, during the mass screening, we used to have only one Chow, that is community outreach health worker. Okay, but then during the mass screening, we, um, we had um, five more on board, plus uh, those that they these are the childs that they, they first volunteer, but now after this mass screening, they are really confirmed as, um, as our permanent staff to work with us. So that's a good thing about it. Yeah, we're so happy that they are being paid now. They are on payroll, oh, great. yes, okay. permanently. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, once again, thank you very much. All right, thank and you. thank you. <laughs>
and underwent two major surgeries to get my left lung removed. Uh, doctors had given me just 1% chance of survival and uh, they told my parents that they should fulfill all my wishes and let me die peacefully because there is not a chance in the world that I would be alive. Uh, and here I am speaking to all you beautiful people. Uh, so, <laughs> the journey was not that easy. It was very difficult. Uh, every night when I slept, I didn't know if I would be alive the next morning. And uh, my family had to go through so much. We had to uh, take personal loans. And uh, TB is not just a physical disease. Uh, it's a physical battle, but it's a mental battle too. So as TB patients, as most of you are aware, we are made to take 15 to 20 pills each day. I took about 400 injections. And uh, doc it's very easy for the doctors to you know, make presentations and write the name of the medicines, uh, canamycin, amicacin, capriomycin, this, that, that. But ask a doctor to take these medicines just for a single day, right? So very often when we are down with flu or viral fever, we are prescribed antibiotics and uh, we find it difficult to even complete the course up for five days, right? Imagine a patient taking 15 to 20 pills each day and with such horrible, horrible side effects. My vision was affected, my hearing was affected, I was coughing out blood, I couldn't eat, I was just 28 kgs, uh, yeah. So it, it was a very uh, painful experience, but at the same time, it was a very enriching experience because TB teaches you a lot. It has made me strong. It has made me who I am today. Uh, family support is very important, but I was lucky I had family support, but in India, there are so many people who do not have that kind of support. And many a times the patients are abandoned completely by their family. Uh, once I got cured, I wanted to share my story because I did not want anyone else to suffer the way I did. So when I told my extended family that I want to talk about it, I want to share my story, I want to motivate people, many people advise me against it saying that TB it's in your past you don't have to talk about it anymore right who will marry you and I'm like I don't care who marries me right <laughs> and and the doctors had given me one person chance of survival and I I could have been dead but you won't believe when the family visited me in the hospital the only question they asked my parents is now that she is well, who do you think will marry her? <laughs> and I was like, shouldn't they be happy with the fact that I'm alive and I'm going to spend the rest of my life with my family? Instead, they're worried about who will marry me maybe 10 years down the line. And what if I don't want to get married? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, People are insensitive, and I really don't understand what's it with TB and stigma. It's not like that I have murdered somebody, right? Why should I be stigmatized even 10 years or 20 years after I have been cured of TB, right? So um, even the doctors and the healthcare providers, and sometimes even the nurses, do discriminate against the patient. Like in the, previously, in the previous presentation, doctors said that they tell the patients that you have to take the medicines because you will spread the disease. It's not like that we want to go and spread the disease. It's very, you know, I don't know if it affected you or not, but as a patient, it did affect me. If someone is telling me that you have to go take the medicines because you'll spread the disease. We are already self-stigmatizing ourselves, right? Uh, at that time, I, I was diagnosed in 99. We didn't have masks at that time. So what I used to do is I used to uh, tie a handkerchief so as to not infect anyone. You know, the fear of infecting someone, infecting your loved one is what, you know, uh, you know, may, takes you into isolation. 
So I'm 35 now and I have been hospitalized for 17 to 18 times now, right? So every two years, like all of you go on a holiday, every, uh, every year I go to the hospital. <laughs> so I have encountered so many nurses in my life and uh, I have had good experiences, I have had not so good experiences because like in all uh, professions you have good people and I won't say bad nurses because I respect nursing as a profession, I will say not so good nurses. <laughs> okay, so um, when I was battling with TB, uh, my mom used to work night shifts so that she could be with me during the day and my dad used to be with me in the night. Uh, the problem in India is we, I came from a middle class family so I couldn't afford a private room in the hospital. It was a general ladies ward. So my father couldn't be with me and stay with me during the night. So the nurses on duty took care of me like their own child. Um, I still get very emotional speaking about the, those experiences because uh, I was just 16 and 17 and going through so much in life and somehow the nurses, you spend maximum time with nurses. The doctors will visit you in the morning and they'll just sign something and they'll just vanish and they are nowhere to be found. Are there any doctors in the room? <laughs> so, so the nurses are with you during the day and they are taking such good care of you and I like this uh, quality of nurses very and, and I find it very endearing that no matter how much the workload, no matter how overworked they are, they will always have a smile on their face. And they will have the same dedication to each one of their patients. So, uh, I was young and I was naughty, so I used to roam around and I was, you, you, won't, you wouldn't find me on my bed. I'm always uh, loitering around the nurse's station, you know. So uh, they too, you know, used to spend time with me, chat with me, and uh, we, uh, over the years, we form, uh, you know, a, a strong bond. And uh, yeah, so uh, like uh, in every hospital, there is this strict matron nurse. Who is, I don't know why, she is very strict and very grumpy all throughout the day. <laughs> so she all, so there was this one nurse and she used to scold me every day like how teachers scold the students for not behaving properly. She used to do that. But she was kind at heart, but then she had to be strict because she was a matron. <laughs> okay. So, so what happens is when you're put into situations where, where you're helpless and you possibly cannot control things around you, you find ways to be happy where you are. So during the hospital stays, the long hospital stays, uh, we make the nurses and the fellow patients our family and we try to be happy and play games and, you know, spend time with each other. So the another incident which I clearly remember is that while I was taking treatment for MDR-TB, I was diagnosed with malaria. And my mom couldn't stay with me and I was running a 103 degree fever and my mom couldn't stay with me. My mom didn't have the luxury to quit her job to take care of me because I had a younger brother and the medical expenses were too high. So um, I remember she had tears in her eyes when she left me that night because she thought I will be all alone. The nurse on duty promised her that she would take care of me like her own child and believe you me, she sat, she completed all her work. She sat with me uh, besides my bedside. She kept changing those, uh, what do you call those strips you put when somebody has fever? She kept on changing those the entire night. And early morning when my mom came from work, she found that nurse sitting right next to me doing the same thing. She did not sleep even in her break. And that's why I salute nursing as a profession. I know you do not get those that credit that you deserve, but I as a patient would like to thank each one of you for the tireless service you are doing and you are doing so much for the patients and without even, uh, you know, thinking about how overworked you are, how less paid you get. I am not sure how much you get paid, but in India, <laughs> they don't get enough. And, okay, so about the stigma, I strongly feel that uh, there was this incident uh, which um, has scarred me to life. Uh, 
there was this i was operated into uh, for a, i was admitted in a hospital for a laparoscopy in 2008 and uh, you know the doctors come and take the history so i told the doctor that i had mdr tb my lung has been removed and so on and so forth so next day when the nurses came to me to take my vitals uh, they weren't wearing a mask so the head nurse came screaming and believe you me she screamed she literally screamed that on the junior nurse saying that you don't understand she has had mdr tb and you are not wearing a mask and all the patients in the room started looking at me and i was like what i am cured way back in 2005 it's 2008 now how am i going to infect her and by the till the time i was discharged each one of the patient looked at me as if i was a criminal and that upset me a lot so now i don't understand why do i have i have to hide the fact that i have tb you know i have had um, uh, malaria if i share that with everyone will will anyone have problem no malaria is also a disease which get treated with treatment will you take medicines and you're cured same is with tb you take medicines and you're cured you ask the patient to take precautions while the person is infectious and you ask them to take precautions at that time if i've had tb as a, in my childhood how am i going to infect someone as a, as an adult right and why does having tb will have i can understand if somebody doesn't want to marry me because i don't have a lung but why would somebody not marry me just because i have had tb right so i hope my story will motivate you all i mean you are already doing enough and uh, i hope my story will motivate you all to do even more because there is so much to be done and um, we uh, tb patients and we uh, when we are dealing with tb we are dealing with so much that we need that love care and affection from everyone around us not just our family but the healthcare provider the nurses and everyone i know you are overworked i know you are tired i know you must be having your own problems to deal with but then a smile never hurts so thank you guys thank you so much thank you kncv for having me i hope i did not let you down uh, i did not prepare my speech and i i spoke from my heart i apologize for if if i said anything wrong thank you i also forgot that i would love to hug each one of you nurses personally <laughs> for because i cannot obviously find the nurses who helped me back then but i will give you each one of you a hug personally oh, okay. thank you <laughs> don't go don't go don't go anywhere Maybe. um thank you so much for that very motivating i think um and heartfelt um talk I think it's I hear many TB patients and MDR TB patients and survivors say that TB teaches you a lot. What do you think is the one thing that TB taught you that you take with you? Firstly, endurance. Uh, uh what happens is generally we find people cribbing about small small problems in our life. <laughs> And as a TB patient, um when the doctors treating you say that there is no hope you are going to die and that's when i decided no i'm not going to die because i was seeing my family fighting for my life and i did not want to let them down mm -hmm. so never give up is the motto which i follow which i think every tb patient follows and i think everyone in general should follow that you no matter what the problems in life there is always a solution right mm -hmm. problems are a part of life they are going to come how you face them is important important very important words to live by does anyone I, i think everyone was moved by that does anyone have any um questions or just comments that they would like to compliments would do it com well, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey it looks like she's got something to say I was so touched <laughs> i started to cry i i always do but uh <laughs> Uh, and I'm. Uh, I think it's really nice that you came here and shared your story. Um, if you should uh, tell us 
what was the worst uh, side effect or experience you had during your treatment? And uh, think about after, uh, us as nurses, what should we learn? Mm. What was the worst? Mm. Uh, the worst side effect I would say was uh, mainly my vision was affected, so I couldn't see properly, and I had the fear of losing my vision. My hearing was affected too. The worst side effect for me was the joint pains, because in India um, we used to have uh, toilets where we need to squat, right? So using a toilet every day would be a struggle for me. It's like I had tears every time I came out of the washroom. And these are the simple, simple issues like using a restroom is like you, you do that so many times a day. But imagine you have to cry and, you know, find, find a, a, a comfortable position for you to be able to do that. And every single day, that is something which, you know, needs a lot of uh, courage, I would say. Any other questions, comments, compliments? <laughs> There's got to be something out there. No? Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> if no one is, then uh, I get a chance. Uh, Deepthi, thank you very much for your presentation, for your wonderful story. Um, but that brings me also to the fact that we also struggle because we like patients to share their story like you do. And we also know that it's very difficult to motivate patients to do so because they want to leave it behind. It's in their past, it's gone. Can you give us advice what we can do to motivate uh, patients to tell their story? Because I think, and I think we all agree that it has a great impact on healthcare workers when patients tell their story on their own, tell their own story. Can you? Tell us what we can do to motivate patients to help us. Okay. So the main reason why people don't share their stories is because of the stigma attached to the disease. So we need uh, awareness about the, 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 about the disease and we need more people to talk about it. And um, uh, you know, uh, what I do back in India is after my each speech that I gi uh, give, I ask people in the crowd that is there a survivor? You know, many a times people raise their hand that I am a survivor. And when I ask them that have they shared that with anyone in the past, they say no, this is the first time I'm coming out and say, saying that I'm a survivor. And I ask them what motivated you to do that? So they said that your story. No. You know, the, the fact that you are open about it and you are talking about it. So it will take some time. But if we stop stigmatizing the patients, the people affected with TB, and if more and more famous people talk, start talking about it, maybe that's when the paradigm shift would happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Tea break. Tea break. Tea break. So we now have a 15-minute um, coffee tea break. And so we'll come back at um, 5.15.